to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. To the church in Ephesus, the apostle Paul said, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 and 11. When you think about going to battle, and when you think about war, and you think about how a person ought to dress and, and his demeanor and all of that, Paul discusses that as it relates to the spiritual battle that the Christian is in. And on our lesson today, we're going to think about the battle and the whole armor of God. And so we hope you'll stay with us as we consider this wonderful topic from God's Word. We're so glad that you've joined us for our study today. As always, we want you to know that today's lesson is being brought to you by individual Christians and congregations of the Church of Christ. The Lord's Church in your local area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. Whether that be on Sunday for worship or Wednesday for Bible study, you would be an honored guest at any of their assemblies. You'll find people there who love God, who love others, and who are deeply concerned about the souls of men and women. Friend, if you've got a Bible question, maybe you're wondering about salvation or the church or, or any number of religious uh, matters, you'll find people in the Lord's church in your local area who'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God with you in kindness and love and look at the truth of God's Word. Also, here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your desire to know God better. We encourage you to check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can access all our lessons. They're available to you free of charge. In fact, if you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson or any of our lessons, just go to our website, fill out a media request form. We'd be happy to make that available to you as a digital download or other formats if you need that as well. And friend, we want to encourage you also to check us out on Facebook, like our Facebook page, follow us on that. Great way to keep up with things that we're doing. And then, of course, in our fast-paced world today, where everybody's got a smartphone, we want to encourage you to check out the Gospel of Christ app that's available in the respective play stores. You can get it there, and it's a great way to keep up with our new lessons, what we're doing, and just so that you can know how we're trying to spread the Gospel and reach people with the news of Jesus Christ. And as always... We want to thank you today for joining us for our study. Hope you've got your Bible ready. Let's look to the Word of God together. Every child of God must realize that he is in a spiritual battle for his soul. The Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3 through 5, Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, for pulling down stronghold, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We live a fleshly life. There's no doubt about that. But the battle that Christians are in is a spiritual battle. Remember what Paul said again? Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you can stand against the wiles of the devil. And while our fleshly life is a blessing in and of itself, Genesis 2 verse 7, God breathed in the man the breath of life and man became a, a living being. We can't just focus on the fleshly side. We've got to realize and we've got to rise up and fight the spiritual battle every day. You remember 1 Timothy 1 verse 18, 1 Timothy 6 verse 12, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, Paul would say. And so my friend, as we think today about the whole armor of God, realize 
how strenuous, realize the seriousness, the gravity of the spiritual battle that we're in. And in fighting that battle, one of the things the Bible teaches us is you can't get caught up in the affairs of this life and really stay focused on the spiritual battle. 2 Timothy 2 verse 4, Paul says that a good soldier doesn't get caught up in the affairs of this life. He's focused on what the general tells him. He's focused on being a good soldier and winning the battle. And my friend, that's the focus for us today. Don't, don't let everything in this life drag you down. Realize our first priority is to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And, and you can't love God and mammon and worldly treasures and that be what God wants it to be. Mark chapter 12, verse 30. Matthew chapter 6, verse number 24. And friend, as we think about the spiritual battle, Let's realize that God, God knows our heart. Acts 1 verse 24, God knows the hearts of men. He knows your heart. Luke 16 verse 15, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the good and the evil. There's nothing hidden from his sight. All things are naked and open before the eyes of him with whom we must give an account. Proverbs 15, 3, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13. And so we've got to be entirely devoted. Give Paul would say, give yourself completely, entirely to these things. And so let's realize the importance of the battle we're in. A friend, I also want you to realize this. In putting on the whole armor and getting ready to fight the good fight of faith, let's realize who the spiritual opponent is. Satan is our enemy. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, describes Satan as the God of this world. Not that he is God, but people of this world have given themselves over to him, and he thinks he's lofty and high, like God. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 14 and 15. Sometimes, you know, the picture of Satan is he uh, has a pitchfork, and he's red, and he's got a long pointy tail. That's not how Satan comes to you. 2 Corinthians 11, 14, and 15 says it's like an angel of light. Everything looks good, seems good, but in the end, it's not that way. The Bible describes Satan as 1 Timothy 3, verse 7, Ephesians 6, verse 11, conniving and wily. Friend, I want you to see the, the thoughts. I want you to see the intent. I want you to see the planning that Satan has as a spirit, Satan doesn't just fly by the seat of his pants. That's not the way it works. When you think of someone being wily, one of my favorite cartoons as a kid, on Saturday morning we'd watch Looney Tunes, and one of my favorite was Wily Coyote and the Roadrunner. And the coyote never catches the Roadrunner, but you know what he does? He's always got some ingenious acne product that usually backfires, but he is always scheming. He's wily. He's always got another plan if that one don't work. The Bible says that Satan is conniving and he's a wily enemy. John 8 verse 44, the Bible says that the devil is a liar and a murderer. He's not going to tell you the truth. He's not going to show you his cards. He's not going to tell you what it's really like. But what he really wants to do is murder you. He wants to cause you to spend eternity in hell with him. Now, let me show you the most graphic picture I think the Bible presents of Satan. 1 Peter 5, verse number 8. The Bible says, be sober, be vigilant. Why? Your adversary, the devil, walks about, he's prowling about like a roaring lion. What's he doing? Seeking whom he may devour. You know, when you go to the when you go to the zoo, it's usually the case that you hear the lion roar. And when you hear the lion roar, you can be thankful that he's behind that fence and he can't get to you. But what if you were out in the bush and the lion was on the prowl and he was roaring and he was hungry? Your chances wouldn't be real, real good. Friend, in a spiritual sense, that's what the devil's like. The king of the jungle is the picture that is given to Satan in a spiritual sense. He is a, a woeful adversary, and we need to be careful about our opponent. But here's what we also know in this battle. We have the best captain over our army that you could ever imagine. 
Hebrews 2 verse 10 says, Jesus as captain over the Lord's army has gone before us. He has prepared the way and he has done everything possible as the captain over the Lord's army to make sure that we can win the battle. Even he went to the cross and defeated Satan in death. Hebrews 2 verse 14. And so if I'll follow him, if I'll accept his orders, if I'll do what he tells me, if I will arm myself with his armor following him, I can definitely win the battle. But friend, I want you to see what's, stake, what's at stake in the battle. Most battles are for physical, fleshly, a lot of times about money or pride or a possession or, or more land, things like under that. That's not what's at stake in the battle. In this battle, your soul is at stake. James 5 verses 19 through 20 says, Let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. It's souls that are hanging in the balance. Luke 12 verse 20, Jesus said to the rich fool, You fool, this night will your soul be required of you. And you remember the questions of Mark 8, 36 and 37. What will it profit a man? If he gains the whole world and loses his own soul, friend, I'm going to live somewhere forever. You're going to live somewhere forever. The way we fight the battle, if we arm ourselves, if we follow Jesus, if we take it seriously, is going to have a big factor on if that's heaven or if that's hell. And so let's talk about the armor of God today. I want you to open your Bible, if you're not already there, to Ephesians 6, and look at what the armor God has given the Christian is. Notice verses 13 following. Paul says, Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with the truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. What are the essential ingredients, the essential attire? to be in a battle? What do you have to have? You gotta have good equipment, but what are some of the things you need? Well, Paul mentions, first of all, in Ephesians 6 verse 14, that you've gotta have, you've gotta gird your waist with the truth. This is kind of a, a belt. When you gird your waist with the truth, we're talking about a belt. Uh, we're talking about, in, in doing battle, oftentimes, the men in that day and age would wear long flowing uh, garments. And in, in the battle, what they would do, you couldn't run or fight with those garments on. Instead, they would pull them up on both sides and tie them together. And it would be more like a pair of athletic shorts almost when you were finished with that. But it's, it's, it's girded and it's tied up. The idea is that truth, God's truth, is what girds everything together, what holds it up, gets everything out of the way so that you're in the battle and ready to fight the good fight. Now, Pilate asked, what is truth? John 18, verse 36 following. And Jesus taught us, the belt of truth is God's word. You'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. John 8, verse 32. Jesus said, sanctify them by your truth, your word is truth. God's Word is the standard. It's what holds everything together. It's the integral piece that, that gets everything out of the way and gets you ready to fight the good fight of faith. You see, truth sets you free from sin. John 8 verse 32. Truth is what saves a man. Romans 1 16, we're saved by the gospel of Christ. Truth and knowing the truth prevents us from falling into the trap of sin. Your word I've hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. And, and truth is such an integral part in the armor that the Christian needs to put on. And so initially, one needs to ask himself, 
Have I girded myself with the truth? Have I obeyed the truth? In sincere love of the brethren, have we obeyed the truth? Romans 6, 17 says, God be thanked, though you were the slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you are delivered. Have you submitted to Jesus Christ initially? Do you believe he's the Savior of the world, the Son of God? John 8, verse 24, would you confess him as Lord in Christ, Matthew 10, 32, Acts 2, verse 36. Would you turn from a life of sin and acceptance of the truth and turn to God, Luke 13, verse 3. And have you obeyed the truth by being baptized into Christ, clothing yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ, Galatians 3, 27, for the remission of your sins, Acts 2, verse 38. And so the truth has got to be that key part that binds everything together, that comes first. Then Paul mentions this. In, the, in our fight against sin and Satan, you've got to put on the breastplate of righteousness. Look at it again, Ephesians 6, verse number 14. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with the truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. So imagine if we're in a battle and somebody's shooting armor at you and, and, and your main organs have got to be protected so that you can continue to function and fight. You've got a, a breastplate of righteousness. What would we think of? To, we don't, a breastplate is not something we really think of. We would say it in the sense of, you've got a bulletproof vest. You've got a Kevlar vest on. And you might get shot in the heart, but it's not going to penetrate that vest. It's going to protect you. What is that vest? What is that bulletproof vest that protects you against the onslaught of weapons that the devil's sending your way. It's the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness is the decision that I make every day to live for God. All God's commandments are righteous. Psalm 119 verse 72, I am to seek first God's righteousness, Matthew 6, 33. I'm to do my best to be holy as the one who called me is holy. Leviticus 11.44, for without holiness, no one can see God. When we talk about righteousness, we're not talking about, hey, this person's perfect, but we're trying to walk in the light as he is in the light every day. 1 John 1, verse 7, I'm trying to follow in the footsteps of Christ, 1 Peter 1, verse 21 and 22, I'm trying to have the mind of Christ, and I'm trying to live an exemplary life to give honor and glory to Almighty God. If a person's trying to live right, no matter what happens, if you die in righteousness, friend, you're a winner either way. And then as you think about the armor that the Christian is to have, the Christian armor, we are to put on the gospel boots. Look in your Bible in Ephesians chapter 6 and notice what the scripture says in verse number 15. And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. One of the things that'll take you out of the battle quicker than anything else is if your feet go bad. If your feet get wet, you get foot rot, your feet are hurting you, you're out. Can't walk, you can't fight. Good shoes are one of the first things you'll be assigned in any type of battle. Whether it's a runner, whether it's somebody who works outside every day, military personnel, top of the line, expensive shoes, good quality. Shoes are so important in any of that. And what are the shoes that we put on our feet in this fight against Satan? having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, being prepared to talk about and to live according to the good news, the preparation of gospel of peace, our mind, our heart, and our life have been prepared to live according to the gospel of peace. Friend, we're not out looking for a fight. We're promoting God's love, God's grace, and God's peace. And my life is lived by the gospel of peace every day. I know that Jesus gave his life on Calvary for all the world. I know that God wants all men to be saved. I know that God doesn't want anybody to perish. 1 Timothy 2, 4, 2 Peter 3, verse 9. Our hearts are prepared by that, that good news 
that my sins have been washed away by the sacrifice of Jesus. I'm a child of God, and if I live faithful unto death, I'll have the crown of life. You, you put that on your feet. Friend, you're prepared to go anywhere, regardless of the terrain, regardless spiritually of what you might have to face. When you've made a commitment to the gospel of peace, your feet can go anywhere, you can follow the Lord, and you're not going to get tired or sore and give out if you're truly living according to the gospel every day. But then notice a big one. Look in Ephesians chapter 6 and notice what the Bible says in verse number 16. Above all, kind of like this is one of the major ones. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. During the first century time when some city or some area might be besieged by a battle, oftentimes the opposing army, they would have archers. And those archers would have their tips with, they would put pitch, uh, some kind of flammable material on the end of that tip, and they would light it, and then they would shoot it. And of course, that fiery arrow that's headed towards you, if it hits the house, that's okay too, because it's going to catch the house on fire. If it hits you, it might catch you on fire. How do you protect against all the onslaught of the fiery darts of the wicked one? Look at what he says. Take up the shield of faith with which you can listen, quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. What did the, what did the military being fired against do to put out those fiery darts? Well, history records for us that they would have a shield, maybe really solid wood or metal. Then they would have a piece of leather or some type of material on the outside of that shield, and they would soak that material maybe for a long time in very wet water or something like that, and the wetness would hold. And then when the fiery darts come, they place that shield up, it hits that, it's wet, and it immediately puts it out. What's the picture? The devil's sending a lot of fiery darts my way and yours. Doubt, he's sending darts of, of evil, temptation, sin, sending problems and frustration and difficulty into my all kind of darts, fiery darts are headed your way. How are you going to quench them and put them out? Take up the shield of faith. Faith is the victory. 1 John 4 verse 4, 1 John 5 verse 4, our trust in God, Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, faith being based on evidence and substance, Hebrews 11 verse 1, when I, when I can see the evidence, when I can know to trust God no matter what, I can't see how it's all going to work out, but faith is the victory the Christians have because we can hold that up knowing that there is a God, His Word is true, and that God's going to help us. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so we take that shield of faith and defend ourselves against all the bullets and weapons that Satan's going to send our way. Now, two last things in this armor that we have. Look at Ephesians 6 verse 17. Christians put on the helmet of salvation. Look at what the Bible says. And Take the helmet of salvation. A helmet protects your most important, your brain, your thinking organism, that which you can fight with, that which you think and, and make decisions about, so integral in that. What protects that main thinking, functioning heart of man, spirit? The helmet of salvation. Friend, if, if a person knows that he's obeyed the gospel, 1 John 2, verse 22, this is the promise he's promised us, eternal life. If we know we have eternal life, I'm not talking about being cocky. I'm not talking about being overconfident or prideful. But if we know our names are written in heaven's book of life, if we know we've been faithful unto death, if we know that death is not a bad thing for a child of God, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, no problem going into the battle with that helmet on, regardless of what happens. I'm on the winning side. Salvation will be mine either way because of what Jesus has done. You don't tuck tail and run away from the battle if you've got the helmet of salvation. It's what protects us even during the most, even during the worst onslaught of the battle. And finally, we take up the sword of the Spirit. Look at Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 17. 
the Bible says, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. You see, the sword, the Word of God is living, powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even to the vision of soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. We contend for the faith with it. Jude verse 3, we, 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 we fight off the devil and all the problems he's trying to... Give me an example. Matthew chapter 4, the devil came to tempt Jesus. Three times he hit him with everything he had. How did Jesus defend himself against that? Listen to what he said every time. It is written, it is written, it is written. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. That's how you use the sword of the Spirit. We speak the truth in love. We know what God's Word teaches, and we try every day to live a life true to the Word of God. And so, friend, we ask you today, are you in the battle against Satan and sin? Are you on the Lord's side? Is Jesus the captain of your army? Have you obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ? Do you believe He's the Son of God? John 8, verse 24. Would you turn away from a life of sin and turn to Him, Acts 3, 19? Would you acknowledge with your mouth He is the Savior of the world, Matthew 10, 32 and 33? And would you do what Jesus said to be saved? He that believes and is baptized will be saved. If you're not a Christian, we urge you, get in the battle, the good fight of faith, so that you can have the hope and joy of heaven. Maybe you're a Christian, but you've got dragged down. You let some of this armor go. You quit fighting the good fight. Friend, know today that God loves you. He cares deeply for you. He wants you to win the battle. And please, we beg you today to make sure that you're fighting the good fight of faith. Join us next time as we study more about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, Internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. The gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On demand, downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.